Hello everybody, welcome to Cryptids and Critters Paranormal. I'm your host and founder, The Dooster. Today is March 5th, 2024. Today I'm going to continue with my series on haunted locations in Robertson County, Part 4. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, Bell Schoolhouse in Adams, the haunted railroad trestle outside of Springfield, the old Ben Baggett farm between Springfield and White House, the Keysburg Road Bridge between Keysburg, Kentucky and Adams, Tennessee, and the old covered bridge on Washington Road outside of Cedar Hill. Um, accounts from these locations can be found in my book, Ghostly Whispers. It's available on Amazon, Moss's Restaurant, and the Bell Schoolhouse in Adams, the Robertson County Archives in Springfield, and from my home base Soggy Bottom Bookstore. If you want an autographed signed copy, shoot me an email to ghosthunter911 at gmail.com and I'll make sure you get your own personal copy delivered right to your home. I do accept Venmo, PayPal friends and family. I accept Cash App and also personal checks. Uh, the first location I want to discuss to you today is the old Bell Schoolhouse located in Adams, Tennessee. It is now used as City Hall, and it's also the home of a Moss's Restaurant. If you haven't been there, I highly recommend it. They have some great food there. But anyway, back to the Bell Schoolhouse. Uh, several years ago, a girl who was a student at the Bell Schoolhouse became sick. It was a common practice in the day for a teacher to put her on a little cot in the cloakroom so she could rest and feel better. For those not familiar with the term a cloakroom, a cloakroom was a small room divided off from the main classroom. These rooms were quite small and were used to hang students' coats and jackets, uh, plus a local storage area for books, maps, and other teaching aids the teacher could use. Uh, most were equipped with a small folding cot in case the student needed to lay down. Like I said, the little girl wasn't feeling well, and the teacher put her on the cot in the cloakroom and went back to lecturing the other children. When she checked on her later, she thought the little girl was asleep, but on closer inspection, revealed the little girl had died. It is believed by many that the spirit of this young girl is the apparition as it's seen roaming the hallways of the old school. The cloakroom she died in is now used for storage for the Adams Museum and was the site of one of my paranormal investigations. When my granddaughter Lily was about two years old, we visited the Adams Museum during the annual Tennessee-Kentucky Threshman Show. As soon as we pushed a stroller into the room, she became very agitated looking toward the door of the storage room and yelling, No! No! She then pointed to the door and says, Little girl! No! No! And looked away. She became so agitated, we had to remove her from the room, and she refused to let us take her back in there. Uh, for years, the old Bell School was used as an antique mall. And several of the vendors reported seeing a little girl on the stairway, in the hallways, and in some of the old classrooms. A few years ago, a tourist passing the Bell Schoolhouse on his way to work one morning noticed a, a little girl sitting on the front steps. Finding it odd that a little girl would be sitting there alone at that hour, he decided to check on her. She was still sitting there when he turned around and entered the driveway. And as soon as he rolled down his window to talk to her, she simply vanished. And yes, she was wearing a green dress. Another incident took place several years ago and occurred just a short distance from Adams where Keysburg Road crosses Red River. At the time, the old bridge spanning the river was a one-lane metal bridge with a high steel framework along each side. One of the local residents, who wishes to remain anonymous for obvious reasons, was out late one night with his mistress and was driving her back home after an illicit moonlight rendezvous. As the student entered the bridge, 
they saw a, excuse me, sorry, as the vehicle entered the bridge, they saw a young girl in a green dress standing in the middle of the road. Traveling downhill at a high road speed, the driver stood on his brakes, but did not have sufficient braking distance, nor could he swerve to the side to avoid impact. The vehicle hit the girl at a moderate speed, and the impact was felt and heard by both of the occupants, leaving no doubt that they had run over someone or something on the bridge. The vehicle finally slid to a screeching halt at the far end of the bridge. Stunned and terrified, the driver jumped out and ran, to, ran back onto the bridge, while his lady friend just sat there screaming at the top of her lungs. On the bridge, he found no evidence of the girl whatsoever. No body, no blood, no hair, nothing. All that remained there were skid marks that extended through the length of the bridge. Thinking she had been knocked over the side, he peered down into the water that flowed underneath, and with the help of the full moon, found nothing out of the ordinary. An inspection of the front of his vehicle revealed no damage whatsoever. Finally, he got his hysterical mistress calmed down and quickly drove away from there before the neighbors could come along and catch them together. After all, it would kind of be hard to explain why he was out with someone else's wife, especially at such a late hour. After he dropped her off at her home, he took an alternate route through Sadlersville, even though that was several miles out of his way. It would be a long time before he'd travel across that bridge again. There have been many sightings of this apparition on the bridge over Red River. Even after the old bridge was removed and replaced with a more modern concrete bridge, the sightings still continue to this day. The location of this bridge is in close proximity, if not situated on, the property that once belonged to John Bell. Other sightings of a young girl wearing a green dress have occurred at the old Bell School building, although at this point I'm not 100% sure if it's the same apparition as the one seen on the bridge or not. Uh, the next site I want to talk about is the old haunted railroad trestle just outside of Springfield. Uh, there are several space places in Springfield that are purported to be haunted. The l and Railroad Trestle on Kenny's Road, on Kenny's School Road, is one such place. The legend states that a girl was tossed from a train one night as it crossed the trestle over Sulphur Fork Creek. The legend goes that if you were parked by the trestle when the midnight train crossed, you could hear a woman screaming and your car engine would die along with your lights and your radio. The engine would not restart until the train passed over the trestle. Several old-timers that used the creek banks beneath the trestle for a quick romantic interlude with their lover have sworn this is true. Is this a fact or just an urban legend? You tell me. My brother-in-law, Don Guill, shared an interesting story about this area. As a teenager, Don had a small motorbike, which he rode to, to baseball practice at the Springfield High Ball Field. One day they had a doubleheader, and a few, with a few minutes to spare before the next game, Don and a friend named Ronnie jumped on the bike for a quick ride down Old Kenny School Road. Just before reaching Sulphur Fork Creek, they witnessed a pair of glowing red eyes staring at them from the fence row. Frightened, Don immediately turned the bike around and headed back to the safety of the ball field. About that time, Ronnie started screaming, It's got me! It's got me! Get us out of here! When they got back to the ball field, they discovered the back of Ronnie's ball jersey had been ripped to shreds, and there were several deep scratches on his back. They were so traumatized that they couldn't even play ball that night. Uh, the next uh, site I want to talk about is the old Ben Baggett Farm, located off Highway 76 between Springfield and White House. Uh, 
as a young man, my father grew up on what he referred to as the old Ben Baggett farm with my grandmother and her brother, John Holsey. This old farm is located between Brody Hill Subdivision and Grady Jones Road. Now, over the years, I've heard many ghost stories about this place, and my father took me to his old home place many times during his lifetime. One story in particular is about old man Ben Baggett. He was always seen dressed in overalls and had a long gray beard. He usually appeared walking down the lane that led from the old log barn to the house, and his apparition, apparition was seen on a regular basis. He would then walk through the closed front door and stand in front of the fireplace. Then after a few seconds, he simply vanished into thin air. My father had seen him do this several times, and this ghostly scene was repeated many times over. One day, someone broke up the stone hearth, the stone hearth around the fireplace, and they dug up and found some hidden money that was buried underneath underneath the hearth. I don't know if um, Ben Baggett was seen at that site after that or not. Uh, Daddy and Uncle John both told me, but the closet door behind the stairway. It's actually it was beneath the stairway. They said that every once in a while, organ music could be heard coming from the closet. If you closed the door, it would stop the ghostly music, and when you opened it again, the music would start again. And according to Uncle John, he got a little encounter with the ghost of Ben Baggett one day. Uh, Uncle John was sitting on, in the shade on the back porch near the well when he saw old Ben's ghost walking up the lane toward the house. His long beard was blowing in the wind. Uncle John grabbed his shotgun and walked, walked across the field toward him. When he got within point blank range, he fired both barrels into the face of the apparition, yelling, go to hell, you SOB, only he didn't abbreviate. Uh, the ghost simply vanished into thin air. The old log barn had a history of its own and was built from hand-hewn logs cut on the property. On several occasions, a strange light would appear hovering just above the barn roof and was bright enough to be seen from the house, which was several yards, hundred yards away. The horses and mules refused to leave the barn when this strange ghost light was present. And Uncle John told me that the light was bright enough for him to be able to harness the mules well before daylight. The last time my father and I visited, visited the old home place, the old house was about to fall down, but the old log barn was still in fairly good shape, though I'm not sure if it's still standing or not. And another site we want to talk about today is the, uh, uh, in Robertson County, is the old covered bridge that used to span Sulphur Fork Creek over what is now known as Washington Road near Cedar Hill. Several witnesses claimed they heard the hoofbeats of horses and the sounds of wagon or carriage wheels on the wooden floorboards of the bridge, only to find the bridge completely empty with no horses or wagons in sight. It was torn down in the 1950s and a new modern concrete bridge took its place. Some say the hoofbeats can still be heard to this day, even though the old wooden structure no longer exists. Uh, for those of you who have never seen a covered bridge, I'll explain their purpose. Back in the day, when horses and mules were the main source of transportation, covered bridges were built across creeks and rivers so that animals could cross them from one side to another. Horses and mules, along with other livestock, would sometimes balk and refuse to cross over a regular bridge. And a covered bridge was constructed for that purpose. Uh, these covered bridges resembled a livestock barn, and animals would usually show no fear and usually crossed with little or no issues. There were at least three of these covered bridges in Robertson County that I'm aware of at this point. Uh, the one I just mentioned on Washington Road, the one over Suffer Fork Creek on North Main Street in Springfield, and one over Red River at Port Royal. 
and I'm pretty sure there were probably others as well. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Haunted Robertson County Part 4. Subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and leave your comments below. Share this video with your friends and family. Turn on your notifications to stay abreast of future content. Uh, once again, these uh, areas I talked to you today about uh, can be found in my book, Ghostly Whispers. If you'd like a copy, shoot me an email to Robert to uh, Cryptids and Critters. I can't believe I messed up the end of this thing. Shoot me an email to ghosthunter911 at gmail.com. Once again, that is ghosthunter911 at gmail.com. Once again, this is a dooster of cryptids and critters paranormal. Thanks again for watching, and please stay tuned for part five. Thank you.